our VLC. We offer value, providing you with quality review programs and online seminars that bring out the best in you. At VLC, we listen. Adapting to the times, we brought our in-demand on-ground review lectures online with our virtual law companion. Subscribing to this online learning platform means you get 24-7 access to our updated video lectures and bar review notes from the best and most respected lecturers and professors. At VLC, we collaborate, working with the best technology providers through our learning management system to best prepare you for the first ever digitalized bar exams. We work hand-in-hand -hand with legal experts you can trust, providing top-notch services to those who need it the most through our free online legal consultations and free lecture series. Value, listen, and collaborate. This is the VLC way. And we are VLC.
Only a just me, a search warrant or warrant of us, nobody else. That is very important. And before it just me, it's a search warrant or warrant of us, what are the requirements? First, there may be probable cause. Number two, to be determined personally by the judge. Number three, after examination under oath of the complainant and the witnesses may produce. Number four, particularly describing the search, place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized or arrested. Those are the requisites before a just be issued search warrant or warrant of arrest. But first of all, take note, only a just be issued search warrant or warrant of arrest, nobody else. That's why uh, it's still pending at the Supreme Court now, diba? Article 3, paragraph 3 of the family code, we have the provision for a marriage ceremony. Now, in our jurisdiction, we do not recognize unceremonial marriages. There must be a marriage ceremony. The minimum requirement is that the contracting parties must personally appear before the solemnizing officer and personally declare that they take each other as husband and wife in the presence of at least two witnesses of legal age. Now, even assuming that there was no uh, witness here, the marriage will also remain valid. That will be considered a mere irregularity that will not affect the validity of the marriage. Now, under Article 26, Paragraph 1 of the Family Code, all marriages solidize... Felony within the contemplation of Article 4 of the Revised Penal Code as a general rule, threat to spouse, that is threat, that is a felony. Tinakot mo sa saktan eh, papaluin eh. Pero in this case, the threat to spouse is a justified threat to spouse due to the circumstance of no? De uh, defense of property. And second, the threat to spank was made in the exercise of a right under the self-help doctrine, Article 429 of the Revised Penal Code. Owner, owner or lawful possessor of a thing has the right to exclude others from the enjoyment or disposal thereof. And for this purpose, he may use force which is reasonably necessary to pre prevent or repair an act. to do it, to talk about issuance of a warrant of arrest, is to follow blindly the finding of probable cause with the prosecutor, precisely because the prosecutor determines probable cause for the filing of the information in court, whereas the judge determines probable cause for the issuance of a warrant of arrest. So, okay, right? Pero sa issuance ng search warrant, as mentioned, it should be proven. In other words, my friends, the judge must personally conduct an examination of the complainant and the witnesses um, that he may produce under oath of affirmation. The examination by the judge must be proven. Okay? It is not enough to merely adopt the questions and answers asked by the, by a, by the previous uh, investigator during the PI. Magkaiba yun. Bakit? Kailangan po the judge should pair so they examine the complainant and the witnesses. So these are the...
good day to our dear attendees from different parts of the country. I pray that you're all in a great state of health. This free webinar is streaming live via the Villales Law Center's YouTube channel and Facebook page. If you can hear my voice clearly, please type in the comment section hashtag VLC. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Optimize this learning opportunity. Share this free online lecture to your friends and together learn at the comfort of your homes. I want to formally welcome you all to this free webinar. This is part of a series of free online lectures brought to you by the Virtual Law Companion of Villages Law Center. Allow me to share to you this good news. The Virtual Law Companion is the newest innovation of Villages Law Center which aims to provide an easy, convenient, and quality bar review experience. The Virtual Law Companion is a web application that is hosted on a dedicated cloud server. It can be accessed via the internet 24-7 through any web browser using any device or handheld computers like Android or iOS phones. Meaning, you can study anytime, anywhere, and from any mobile device. Please visit our website at www.viliasislawcenter.com to know more about our programs and activities. Before we formally start, please take note of some reminders. First, this free webinar is pre-recorded to ensure the uninterrupted streaming of lectures. Secondly, VLC team will be with you to assist you should you need more information about our program. Please visit and subscribe to our YouTube channel and Facebook page. Without further ado, please give your virtual class and welcome our lecturer today. Again, this free webinar is brought to you by our virtual law companion. Maraming salamat po. Together, we can make things happen. Together, we can. Our lecturer has more than 16 years in the practice of law in the field of litigation, and almost the same number of years in managing his own law office. Currently, he is teaching at the San Sebastian College Ricolitos College of Law and College of Criminal Justice of the Cavite State University main campus. He has authored books entitled, Conceptual Approach to Torts and Damages and Conceptual Approach to Special Proceedings, both published by the Central Book Supply Incorporated. He is a trained commercial arbitrator of the Philippine Dispute Resolution Center Incorporated. Presently, he works as legal counsel of Del Monte Land Transport Bus Company Incorporated or DLTB. Before that, he has already worked in several companies either as retained counsel or corporate secretary since 2004, applying knowledge in civil, criminal labor, and corporate laws in the rendering of legal opinions, providing legal consultations, drafting and reviewing of contracts, and representing the companies before judicial and administrative bodies. Let us all welcome Professor Wilson A. Legaspi. Good day, everyone. I am Professor Wilson Legaspi, and welcome to this free online lecture brought to you by the Virtual Law Companion of Villas's Law Center. Prepare for the bar examinations at any time, anywhere, and from any mobile device. Check out the VLC website at www.villaslawcenter.com for more details and particulars. Optimize this learning opportunity, like, follow, and subscribe to VLC Facebook page. 
in BLC YouTube channel. Please also share this live stream with your friends and together learn at the comfort of your home. So before we start, please comment BLC if you can hear me clearly. Okay, so uh, I will be lecturing today no, some of the salient features of my book, no, Conceptual Approach to Evidence. No. For this uh, purpose, we will be confining our discussion no, mostly to testimonial evidence. Okay, so under the rules of evidence, who can testify? According, according to the rules, no, a witness who can uh, perceive, perceiving, and can make known their perception to others can be a witness. So that is the basic rule on evidence on the question of who can testify. Any person who can perceive, perceiving, can make known their perception to others. Pero hindi lang yun, no? The rules also require that the witness testifying must base his or her testimony on first-hand or personal knowledge. No? And when we say personal knowledge, those who have been acquired by him or her by uh, yung tinatawag na perception. Okay. So perception. When we say perception, according to some uh, foreign authors, no, and alone evidence, no, uh, in this lecture from time to time, I will be quoting a uh, foreign authors why because our own rules of evidence no, have been taken no, from the federal rules of uh, evidence of the united states according to some authors no perception includes inferences or opinions gleaned by experience so that is how perception is understood no? even in foreign jurisdiction it includes inferences or opinions gleaned by experience Okay, maaari nyo yung tanong, sir, baka ma-violate naman yung ating uh, opinion rule. Di ba? In opinion rule, no, it states that a person cannot testify based on his or her own opinion. No? Because the rule is, the witness can also can only testify based on his or her personal knowledge. Okay, so mag-quote ulit tayo ng foreign author. No? Sinasabi nila dyan, in the book of Mueller, no? Kirkpatrick and Richter, in their book Evidence, no? On page 460, a witness can give his or her impression or testify to what he or she thinks or believes he or she saw, provided that he or she perceived the event with his or her own senses. Okay, so yan ang meaning ng perception. Okay, but if the witness engages in speculation or conjecture, or bases his or her conclusions on inadmissible statement by other people, the testimony should be excluded. Why? Because dyan napapasok yung opinion rule, no? yung na sabi natin kanina. Okay? And this will not violate the opinion rule because even in our rules on evidence, merong exception. Okay? What is the exception to the opinion rule? No? As sa rule 130, section 53, witness must, may testify on his or her impressions of the emotion, behavior, condition, or appearance of a person. Okay? So, if a witness can testify because he or she can perceive, perceiving, and can make known his or her perception to others, if the testimony he or she is going to testify on is based on his or her personal knowledge, so it doesn't matter no? what is his or her religious or political belief, belief, what is his or her interest in the outcome of the case, or whether he or she is convicted of, of the crime, no? unless otherwise provided. No? It cannot uh, affect no? he, uh, the, his or her testimony is still admissible in evidence. So you have basic requirements. No? Okay. Perception and based on personal knowledge. Now let's... Okay, na discuss natin kanina to. Let's go to the hearsay rule. Okay. When we say uh, hearsay rule, no? a hearsay, no? it it refers to any out of court statement no? made by a declarant. Under the amended rules, when we say declarant, no? it can be other person than the witness testifying on the witness stand, or it can be the witness himself or herself. Okay, that because that is how hearsay is now defined under the 
amended rules. Any out of court statement. So meaning kahit ikaw no, na nagtetestify so long as your statement no, is made no, outside of the witness stand and I, we are repairing here of the previous statement made not in the present uh, case no, that is or her that is that is being heard no, that is hearsay no. it refers to a statement provided that the issue there there, there is the is the matter being asserted okay so, dapat i-distinguish natin ito sa first-hand or personal knowledge. Magkaiba na sila ngayon. Dati-dati, under the former rule, when we say hearsay, lack of first-hand or personal knowledge. Ngayon, hindi na ganun. Okay. So, magkaiba na sila. Maaring may personal knowledge ka, but that statement was made no, outside of the witness stand. That is still hearsay. So, when we say statement, okay, when we say statement, it may refer to verbal or written statement. It may also refer to conduct intended as an assertion. Okay. So, yun ang meaning ng word statement. Verbal or written statement or even a conduct of a person intended as an assertion. What are the reasons for the prohibition of the hearsay statement. Okay. Jurisprudence states that una -una, there is absence of oath. Okay. Before the witness testifies, he or she must be subject, must be subjected to an oath. Okay. That cannot be done if the statement was made outside of the witness stand. Absence of cross-examination, for sure. Hindi siya maka-cross-examine. Don't say statement na ginawa niya, no, uh, outside of the witness stand. And of course, the minor evidence. Lalong lalo na kung iba yung witness sa declarant. And the declarant made a statement outside of the witness stand. That declarant no, cannot be subjected to the minor evidence. No? The court cannot observe his or her manner of testifying. So absence of the minor evidence. So magbigay tayo ng illustration. No? Uh, pangungunahan ko na kayo, ano, sino mang mga karakter, ang mga nabanggit dito ay sadyang nagkataon lang. Okay, so maaaring makarelate kayo, pero sabi ko nga ito ay sadyang nagkataon lang. Ito, ito, ito ang ating illustration, na direct examination by attorney Kim Wexler on Hank Schrader. Okay, ito ang tanong ni attorney Kim Wexler. No? Mr. Schrader, do you know who is the number one drug lord in Cavite, notoriously known as Heisenberg? Sagot naman si Hank Schrader, no? yes ma'am. And who is that person known as Heisenberg? According to, to Schrader, no, itong kanyang statement, no, according to Jesse Pinkman, Mr. Walter White's long-time drug associate, Mr. White is Heisenberg. Okay. So dito, pangitang-pangita na yung sagot no, ni Schrader ay based on hearsay. Because he testified based on the statement made by Jesse Pinkman, who was not made... Uh, a witness no, to that case. So, pwede bang ma-objectan to under the present rule? O pwede. No? You can move to strike out the answer because it is incompetent. Why incompetent? Because it violates the hearsay rule. Okay, so, so, can, so you can move to strike it out. Okay, because it is hearsay. Paano kung sinabi ni Schrader na uh, ganito ang sagot niya, Mr. White is Heisenberg. You can object to that based on lack of personal knowledge. But then, the ground for objection is not uh, obvious, it's not patent. Okay? So, ito ay ma-impeach na lang itong testimony na to because of lack of personal knowledge through cross-examination. Okay? Kasi hindi uh, pangita, no? hindi patent ang ground for objection. That Schrader has no personal knowledge who is Heisenberg. Okay? So when is an out-of-court statement not hearsay? Bakit kailangan nating pag-aralan to? Because of the present definition of hearsay, no, which is which refers to an out-of-court statement, there are matters that can be considered as hearsay. Kasi nabago na nga eh. Ano ano eh, yung prior inconsistent statement, prior consistent statement and statement of prior identification. 
Okay, unahin natin yung prior inconsistent statement. Itong prior inconsistent statement ay ginagamit ito no, as a cross-examination technique when you want to prove that the witness has testified, has previously testified contrary to what he or she is testifying now. Okay, so prior inconsistent statement. He or she has made other statements, other statements that are that is contrary to what he or she is testifying now. Okay. Pero ito ay out of court statement. Kung wala tong express provision na to, it may be considered as hearsay. Okay. Okay. So, ano ang requirement ng uh, rules, no? Ang sabi ng rules para ito ay hindi ma-object no? as hearsay. No? It must be made. No? The witness must be subjected to cross-examination. No? The witness testifies and is being subjected to cross-examination on his, on his or her statement made previously under oath. So, yun ang requirements. No? Kailangan ang witness is being subjected to cross-examination okay? on his or her statement uh, in a previous proceeding made under oath. Okay, magbigay tayo ng uh, example para mas maintindihan natin yung prior inconsistent statement. So, again, uh, sandali lang. Ito ay, uh, kung meron naman kayong karakter, no? familiar kayo dito sa mga karakter na to, sadyang nagkataon lang. No? Ito ang uh, isang halimbawa. No? Attorney Saul's good, Saul Goods, uh, Goodman's cross-examination on Jesse Pinkman. Ito ang tanong ni Attorney Saul Goodman. No? Mr. Jesse Pinkman, you, you said during your direct examination that Walter White is also known as Heisenberg, the number one drug lord in Kabite. Sasagot naman si Jesse Pinkman. Yes, sir. Okay. So remember, ito ay cross-examination. Kaya ang mga tanong ay leading. Kanimitan ay leading para as much as possible you have uh, control on the witness. Okay. Tanong ulit si Goodman. No? Saul Goodman. Do you remember having executed a counter affidavit in a preliminary investigation where you and Mr. White were the respondents in the case? So, sagot si Jesse Pinkman. Yes, sir. Tanong ulit si Attorney Saul Goodman. And the case is Hanks Raider versus White and Pinkman? Sagot ulit si Jesse Pinkman. Yes, sir. Okay. In your counter affidavit in the said case, so, na-establish na, na mayroong previous proceeding. Okay. You mentioned that Mr. White was wrongly accused to be the drug lord in Cavite known as Heisenberg. Do you confirm that? So, bago pa sumagot ay nag-object si Attorney Kim Wexler. No? Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. So, if you were the judge, will you sustain it? O pwede sana, if it were not for the fact, no? na ang rules mismo, ang rules of evidence mismo ang nag-state na it is not hearsay. Okay? Kasi that statement was made prior, not in the witness stand, but it was made in a previous proceeding. But because pumasok ito doon, doon sa requirement ng prior inconsistent statement, which is not hearsay, hindi siya considered as hearsay. Okay? Noong una, Jesse, P Jesse Pinkman is now being subjected to cross-examination. And that and the statement uh, that is the subject of cross-examination was made in a previous proceeding. Okay? Made under oath. Bakit under oath? Kasi sa preliminary investigation. No? Bago may sabit yung counter affidavit, dapat pinanunumpaan ng witness. So, pasok na pasok. Mind class, hindi uh, mga nakikinig, no? hindi ito... Uh, Hindi requirement yung opportunity to cross-examine in the previous proceeding. Hindi sa requirement. Ang requirement lang, it must be under oath. So, yan ang prior inconsistent statement. Naalala ko tuloy yung, uh, yung uh, just recently yung uh, hearing ni ni Johnny Depp tsaka ni Amber Heard. Diba? Merong isang sindon na nagda-direct exam, nagkakandak ng direct exam yung abogado ni, ni Amber Heard no kanino kay miss kay mismong Miss Amber Heard yata no nag-object yung magaling na abogado ni Janet Depp no si Camille Vasquez hearsay so magot yung abogado ng kapila 
This is a prior inconsistent statement. Hindi mag-apply. Bakit? Because prior is a prior inconsistent statement is a tool during cross-examination. Na hindi naman kano cross-examination. Kundi the witness is undergoing the direct examination conducted by her own lawyer. Na pumunta naman tayo sa prior consistent statement. Paano naman to? The prior consistent statement is made naman to repair the credibility of a witness that has been impeached. Maybe through the use of prior inconsistent statement during cross-examination. Kaya nga, sabi dyan sa rules natin, it is used to rebut an express or implied charge of fabrication okay, or improper pressure or influence. So, yun ang purpose ng prior consistent statement. Kung yung prior inconsistent statement ay ine-employ during cross-examination, ito naman, pwede ito, pwede ito during redirect o pwede rin naman through the testimony of other witness in the subsequent direct, in the presentation of subsequent of the next witness. Agay nito, itong scenario natin. Ito ang scenario. Attorney Kim Wexler presented Marie Schrader to repair the credibility of her sister, Skyler White, who filed a case against her husband for attempted murder because he tried to kill to kill her after she learned that he was involved in drug operations in Cavite. So on cross-examination, Walter, Walter was able to show that Skyler knew and was complicit with her husband in his drug operations all along. Okay, so during the subsequent direct examination of Skyler's sister, Marie Schrader, her counsel tried to show that she did not approve of her, of her husband's illicit activities, though she could not do anything. She later suffered depression. That is why on one occasion, she, mo she momentarily lost her mind and attempted to drown herself in their pool in the presence of several visitors in their house. So ito ang uh, scenario. Na, tignan natin yung tanungan, yung pagkakandak ng uh, examination. Okay. okay. Ito ang tanong ni Attorney Kim Wexler, doon sa witness niya, no? kay Marie Schrader. Ms. Schrader, you previously testified as a witness in the petition for the declaration of nullity of marriage filed by your sister, Skyler White, against her husband, Walter White. So, sagot si Marie Schrader, yes, ma'am. What was your testimony all about? Sagot uli si... Schrader, no? si Marie Schrader. My testimony was about what I observed as the unusual behavior of my sister when my husband and I were in their house immediately prior to the attempt made by my brother-in-law on her life. What was that unusual behavior? So, nag-object si Attorney Saul Goodman. Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. Bakit hearsay? Because that statement was made outside of the witness stand. It refers to a previous statement in a previous proceeding. Okay? But, objectionable ba siya? Objectionable siya where it not for the explicit provision in the rules that prior consistent statement is not hearsay. So, pasok, pasok ba ito sa prior consistent statement? Pasok. Because the purpose of this is to rebut at express or implied fabrication or improper pressure and influence. In other words, to repair the credibility of the witness that has been impeached. Okay, so, yan ang prior consistent statement. Meron pang isa. Yung uh, prior statement of identification. Halimbawa niyan yung mugshots and police lineup. So, tandaan natin yung kanina, maradakol natin yung definition ng uh, statement. It also refers no, to a conduct intended as an assertion. Kagaya niya, ituturo mo lang eh. Kasi yun yung uh, uh, sa tingin mong gumawa ng krimen. Yung nakita mong gumawa ng krimen through police line up. Bakit ito min, uh, minarapat na maging exception to the hearsay rule? Because mas credible ito no, doon sa identification na ginagawa during hearing. So minsan nga nakakasubok ako bilang practitioner, no. Minsan ako ay nag-represent uh, ng accused, no. Hindi pa tapos yung prosecutor, no, sa pagtatanong para ituro ng prosecution witness sino ang uh, uh, allegedly gumawa ng crime. Tumatayo na yung accused, eh. So wala nang gagawin yung witness kundi ituro. Tumayo na eh. 
Uh, kaya pagka ganun, napapagalitan mo tuloy. Ba't ka tumatayo? Di mo iniisip, baka hindi ikaw naman ang maituro. Okay? So, sabi nila, mas credible ito kaysa doon sa in-court identification. What is the rationale? According to the U.S. Senate Judiciary Committee, no, ito yung kanilang naging uh, statement. No? Both experience and psychological studies suggest that identifications consisting of non-suggestive lineups, photographic spreads, or similar identifications made reasonably soon after offense are most reliable that in court identifications. Adm admitting these uh, prior identifications, therefore, provides greater fairness to both the prosecution and defense in a criminal trial. Their, ex their uh, exclusion would thus be detrimental to the fair administration of justice. So itong uh, report ng U.S. Senate Judiciary Committee no, ay uh, sinight no, doon sa case ng State versus Mota. So yan ang rationale. Pero hindi lang basta admissible, basta basta admissible ito ay yung police lineup. Just because it is now not considered it is not considered as hearsay. Merong guidelines na sinusunod. At yan ay nakapaloob sa case ng People versus Algarve no February 12, 2009. Ano ano yung mga test no of an out of court identification before it it becomes admissible. Ito ang dapat ma-establish no, during presentation of evidence. Witness opportunity to view criminal at the time of crime. Okay. So, ganyan kasi. Nag-establish tayo. Naglilay tayo ng foundation no, during presentation of evidence. Ito ang dapat na ma-establish muna. Otherwise, it is objectionable. Okay. Not because it is hearsay. Kasi sabi nga natin, hindi sa consider as hearsay. But because of lack of proper foundation. Okay, witness degree of attention at the time. Accuracy of any prior description given by the witness. Level of certainty demonstrated by the witness at the identification. Length of time between the crime and identification. And suggestiveness of the identification procedure. So, yun ang uh, mga kriteria no, na, na established ng jurisprudence. Okay. So, yun. No? Kung tawagin yun, yung prior inconsistent statement. Okay. Prior consistent statement and out of court identification under the federal rules of evidence. Exceptions na nga siya to the hearsay rule. Kaya itong iba na i-discuss natin, no? kung tawagin ito ay other hearsay exceptions. Pero hindi natin i-discuss lahat. Yun lang mga may pagbabago. No, agaya nito yung declaration against is against interest no? any inter any declaration made by the person deceased or unable to testify against his or her own interest no? that is an exception to the hearsay rule no basis uh, trustworthiness kasi wala namang aamin ng against sa interest niya kung favorable yan hindi siya admissible because that is a self-serving statement pero dahil sa against his or her own interest no pecuniary or otherwise. So that is an exception to the hearsay rule. Pero mayroong exception yan. Ano exception? Kung ang purpose nito, no, uh, ma-establish, ang purpose pala, kaya ginawa yung declaration against interest is to exculpate the accused from criminal liability. And on the other hand, incriminate no, the declarant. Okay. What is the reason? According to rent, according pa rin sa some uh, legal scholars no in kagaya nito nung sinabi ni na Mueller no in their book Evidence and Under the Rules Text Cases and Problems on page 167 kasi sabi nila Sometimes applying the exception to statements exonerating the accused is easy. Okay? A third person confesses to committing the deed making no reference to defendant in a setting in which the declarant's guilt would, exon would exonerate the accused. Sometimes kasi, di ba, nangyayari yan. No? Total, nasa kulungan na rin lang ako. Eh, Mag-usap na lang tayo para para naman sa pamilya ko. Baka tulong pa rin ako sa pamilya ko. Kahit nandito sa kulungan, aminin ko na. Para ma-exonerate ka, 
Di ba? Ma, ma, ma-implicate ako lalo, okay lang. So, yan ang exception to the declaration against interest. Dati-dati walang exception yan, no? but ngayon meron na. Pero merong exception to exception. Ano yun? Yung trustworthiness of the statement. Kung wala naman talagang, uh, kung yun talaga ang dahilan, eh, ba't hindi mo natin i-admit? So, yan ang declaration against interest. Okay. Ang alawa, statement of a dissident or person of unsound mind. Dati-rati ito ay uh, absolute no, disqualification to testify. But now, it is now, it is now only considered as an exception to the hearsay rule. Okay. Anong requisites before ito maging admissible? Now, first, uh, the action must be against the executor or representative of a deceased or person of unsound mind against the executor or representative. Dito ang kinocontemplate dito, lalo na kung ang, ang, uh, it refers to the estate of a deceased. Yung under Rule 87, si Special Proceedings, claims by and against the executor or administrator. Or even under Rule 86, no, yung claims against the estate, if the claim is contested. Kasi pa, paano nga naman magagamit yung evidence na makakalat doon sa claimant kung prohibited altogether because of a dead person's statute? So, parang hindi sa reasonable. Unfair siya. Kaya, minarapat no, ng uh, Rules of Court Revision Committee na gawin na lang itong exception to the hearsay rule. But the, these are the requisites. No? Yung nga, nabanggit na natin kanina, the action must be against the executor or representative of deceased or person of unsound mind. The action must be upon their estate. No? The estate of the deceased or the person of unsound mind. Better see, party to the case testifies on a matter of fact, no, nagkaroon ng typographical error doon, no? on a matter of fact occurring before the death or insanity. Yung uh, statement made no, by the person this is or unable to testify uh, must be before their death or insanity. The statement must be upon the personal knowledge of the deceased or person of unsound mind. So, yan ang four requisites. Bakit from the absolute disqualification, ginawa na lang siyang exception to the hearsay rule? No? Ang, ang pinagbatay natin dito, ginawa natin ito sa, sa law and evidence by the state of California. According to the Mueller pa rin, no? ito yung sinasabi nila, the state of California has adopted an interesting approach. In cases where a claim is made against the estate of a resident, Statements by the dissident may be admitted to rebut such claims. The California statute opens the mouth of both parties. It permits survivor to testify. And it does the next best thing for the dissident, which is to create a hearsay exception, paving the way to admit much of what he or she said on the subject while alive. California provision tries to help people with claims against the estates. Yan ang reason. No? While, on the other hand, accommodating the policy of protecting estates against fraudulent claims. So, naging a win-win solution ito. Doon sa absolute, absolute disqualification to testify. Unang-una, unfair doon, doon sa nag-claim. Pero para ma-isipward din, no? yung estate naman from the uh, previous claims so ginawa na lang siyang exception to the hearsay rule for the reason stated in uh, in what we have quoted here okay so another hearsay another exception to the hearsay rule common reputation okay ano ba ang kanong cover niyan no First, boundaries of or customs affecting lands in the community. Second, reputation as to events of general history important to the community. And third, marriage or moral character. In a list na yung uh, facts of general uh, public or general inter interest more than 30 years old. Wala na yun. In, in a list na yung element of antiquity. Okay? For practical consideration. Di naman nagiging... Uh, Uh, antiquated dyan kung, uh, kung more than 30 years. No? 
So, wala na yun. For practical consideration. Okay. What is the rationale? Ito. For pre- Controversy, reputation, and boundaries and customs affecting land, there's a kind of necessity. For ancient reputation, presumably the sources are dead. So wala na, yung mga sources. No? Patay na, kasi matagal na eh, panahon, ang nangyari. And undocumented customs, custom has much to do with land title and usage, and these points cannot be proved in the conventional way by eyewitness testimony and recorded documents. So that is the rationale why it is an exception to the hearsay rule. Such evidence is reliable because it is the product of public conversation and discussion on matters of some importance and represents a consensus that is probably informed and correct. So that is the rationale why common reputation is an exception to the hearsay rule. Residual exceptions. Isa pa rin tong bagong... Uh, uh, addition no, to the exception to the hearsay rule. Okay, what is the reason for the adoption? Ito yung, yung reason for the adoption natin dito sa ating rules of evidence. Then sharing reason for the adoption doon sa federal rules of evidence. Tandaan natin, uh, we must bear in mind na yung uh, exceptions to the hearsay rule under the federal rules of evidence ay ilan yan? 28. Samantalan sa atin ay 13. And yet, despite the fact na marami na silang exceptions, uh, they still deem it wise no, to make residual exceptions as an exception to the hearsay rule. This is the reason. No? According to the advisory committee's note, no? okay. the preceding 23 exceptions of Rule 83 and the first five exceptions of Rule 84B are designed to take full advantage of the accumulated wisdom and experience of the past in dealing with hearsay. It would, however, be presumptuous to assume that all possible desirable exceptions to the hearsay rule would have been cataloged. Baka sa mga susunod, meron pa tayong makita dyan. Kaya lang, hindi siya ma, uh, maging exception to the hearsay rule kasi wala sa mga explicit uh, exceptions na binabanggit sa rules of evidence. Kaya minarapat no, na magawing itong residual exceptions. Hindi lamang sa Federal Rules of Evidence ng US, maging sa ating uh, Rules on Evidence no? under the 2019 Amendments of our 1989 Revised Rules on Evidence. Okay. Pero hindi basta-basta i-accept yun no? as an exception to the hearsay rule. Hindi basta-basta i-admit. Merong mga requirements na dapat na i-observe o comply <coughs> It has both substantive and procedural requirements. According to, to Rule 130, Section 50, these are the sub substantive requirements. No? First, it must have an equivalent circumstantial guarantee of trustworthiness. Second, the statement is offered as evidence of material fact. Third, the statement is more probative on the point for which it is offered than any other evidence which the proponent can procure through reasonable efforts. And fourth, the general purpose of the rules and the interest of justice will be best served by the by addition of the statement into evidence. So ito ang uh, requirements that must be complied with by the person offering a specific kind of evidence that may fall on a residual exception. Sabi natin, ito ay substantive requirements. Bakit? Kasi mayroong procedural. Ano yung procedural requirements that must be complied with by the person offering it as evidence? No? The proponent must make known to the adverse party in advance of the hearing or during the pre-trial stage the proponent's intention to offer the statement and the particulars of it. Kailangan i- I mention, no? sabihin sa kabilang party what is the uh, intention of the offer and the particulars of it no? including the name and address of the declarant so if these both uh, requirements have been complied with both substantive and procedural so that can be an admission an exception to the hearsay rule because it may fall to a residual exception Pusa tayo sa hearsay rule. 
and some of the exceptions yun lang naman nang merong uh, pagbabago so now let's go to privilege communication <coughs> Agay na si Hirsi, hindi naman lahat ay kailangang discuss. Ang ang may pagbabago lang diyan yung attorney client privilege sa yung physician patient privilege na no? substantive na no? changes. No? Ano kuno cover niyan? No? Ang kuno cover nito yung attorney and the person reasonably believed by the client to be uh, in the practice of law. So, kinonsider na rin yung principle of estoppel no? sa attorney-client privilege. Ano sinasabi doon? Diyan, the attorney and the person reasonably believed by the client to be engaged in the practice of law cannot be, cannot testify on any information obtained in the course of their professional employment. Hindi lang yung attorney, hindi lang yung person reasonably believed by the client to be in the exercise of the legal profession or in the practice of law. Kasama na rin yung kanilang, uh, yung kanilang uh, personnel sa opisina, like the clerk of court, uh, the clerk, no? stenographer, okay, secretary, and any other person assisting the lawyer. So, yun generally yung attorney-client privilege. Ngayon, nag-provide na sila ng exceptions. Dati-dati, wala. What are the exceptions? No? First is furtherance of crime or fraud. Okay. Ang makocover lang ng attorney-client privilege ay yung crime committed in the past. Not future crime. Because otherwise, magiging a party yung abogado sa crime that will be committed by a client. Actually, yan ay in state ngayon sa rules and evidence. But before that, meron tayong uh, ruling ng Supreme Court na sa People vs. Bayan in 1997 that it is not subject to the that uh, it is not subject to attorney-client privilege. Ngayon, the Rules Revision Committee uh, has decided to uh, include it no, in one of the exceptions. Second, claimants through the same deceased client. And ito yung uh, information obtained by a lawyer from the client who, who died. No? Respecting the... Well, that is that is now becoming that is now a subject no, of the controversy between two claimants. Bakit siya exception to the attorney-client privilege? Okay. Meron tayong rule no, sa succession no, as, that as much as possible, you, you respect the wishes of that estator. So that is what, that is the reason of the exception. Sino ba between the two, between the two contending claimants ang dapat na magmana? So yun lang ang issue ron. Kaya minarapat na hindi siya maging exception to the attorney-client privilege. Second, breach of duty. Uh, third, breach of duty by lawyer or client. Natural. Paano mapaprosecute yung case against the lawyer, lalo sa mga disbarment cases or uh, uh, other kind of disciplinary action no, filed by a client to the law, against the lawyer kung siya exception to the attorney-client privilege. No? Paano ma-establish yung case? No? Ganun din yung case by a lawyer against the client. Halimbawa, kung hindi nagbabayad ng attorney's fees. Okay, yung mga case for uh, charging lien. yan. Diba? Paano may establish kung siya ay uh, subject to attorney-client privilege? So that's why it is an exception. Number four, documents attested by the lawyer. Okay, because in this case, the lawyer is not acting as a lawyer, but as a witness. So, uh, logically speaking, hindi talaga sasakop ng attorney-client privilege. And number five, joint clients in the same case. Because uh, for obvious reason, you cannot expect privacy of communication there because they are joint clients in the same case. Pero na lamang kung uh, they are clients in separate cases. Okay? So, those are the five exceptions to the attorney-client privilege. Physician patient privilege. No? Sino sino kuno cover na to? No? And physician person reasonably believed by the patient to be engaged in uh, practice of medicine. Okay? Yung person assisting the physician during diagnosis or treatment of patient at yung bago ngayon, yung tinatawag na psychotherapist. 
Okay, sino ba yung tinatawag na psychotherapist? Engage din siya in the practice of medicine. But ang specialization niya ay uh, treating the uh, regard, uh, treating the emotion or behavioral condition of a person. Okay, kasama na dyan yung licensed psychologist. What is the rationale of the inclusion of the psychotherapist in the physician-patient privilege? Yung reason natin, kaya natin inadapt ito, ay yun din ang reason ng Federal Rules of Evidence. Na inadapt naman nila sa ruling ng Supreme Court sa case ng Jaffe v. Redmond, which was promulgated on 1996. No? Sabi niya sa case na yan, effective psychotherapy depends upon an atmosphere of confidence and trust in which the patient is willing to make a frank and complete disclosure of facts, emotions, memories, and fears. Because of the sensitive nature of the problems for which individuals consult psychotherapists, disclosure of confidential communications made during counseling sessions may cause embarrassment or disgrace. So yan ang reason para katulad din sa patient-patient privilege, sayaan natin na i-disclose lahat ng pasyente, lahat ng information na meron ng pasyente. Hindi sa mga ngamba na lalabas ito, ma madadevolge ito sa ibang tao because of the uh, physician-patient privilege. Okay. So yun ang reason. Sa ang uri ng kaso nag apply ito. It only applies to a civil case, not in a criminal case. Yung physician patient privilege. Mind you, class, uh, mga nakikinig. No? With regard to psych, uh, psychotherapist, meron tayong substantive law, yung Philippine Psychology Act of 2009, no? particularly in Section 30, na nag apply ito, yung physician patient privilege o yung psycho psychotherapist patient privilege. nag apply hindi lang sa civil case, kagaya ng nasa rules of evidence, maging sa other, nag apply din daw ito sa other kinds of proceedings, no? criminal, administrative, or otherwise. So, which will prevail? Of course, the substantive law. Okay, the Philippine Psychology Act of 2009. Another addition, no? just a privileged communication, yung privileged communication in the hands of third person. Alam na alam natin to yung mga marites, yung mga mahilig sa chismis. Dati-dati, when, alimbawa, merong uh, in the course of professional employment ng attorney at ng kanyang client o ng physician at, at, ng, physician at ng kanyang patient na overheard ng somebody. That is not covered. That was not covered by the privilege. But now, it's not covered. No? Privilege communication obtained by third person. So, kasama na sa, sa privilege. Pero meron condition provided that the parties took reasonable precaution, uh, precaution to protect its uh, being privileged in character. Must have undertaken reasonable precaution. But despite that, nakagawa pa rin ng way no? yung, mga, yung third person na ma-obtain yung confidential information obtained in the course of professional employment. Okay. So, tapos na tayo dyan. Uh, there are salient features in my book yung how to impeach a witness, impeachment by contradictor, contradictory evidence, impeachment on credibility. Ito yung sinasabi natin kanina that a witness cannot be disqualified to testify on the ground of religious or political uh, bias no? or belief, interest in the outcome of the case or conviction of a crime unless otherwise provided. Hindi siya pwedeng uh, uh, ma-exclude as, as a witness. Admissible yung testimony niya. But it may affect his or her credibility. He or she may be impeached. Okay. With regard to the uh, impeachment by conviction of a crime, meron ding requirement ito. Hindi basta-basta ma-impeach dahil lang sa na-convict sa crime ang isang tao. Pwede siyang ma-impeach no? if he or she is convicted for an offense punishable by more than one year of imprisonment. O maring hindi more than one year of imprisonment, but it is considered as what? Uh, 
uh, moral turpitude. No? It constitutes moral turpitude. No? That will also, um, we can also impeach the witness, the witness because of such fact. Conviction for more than one year and the crime involves moral turpitude. Ang apat, yung evidence of prior inconsistent statement. Ito na yung sinabi natin kanina. It is a cross-examination technique. It's also a way of impeaching a witness. A witness. And it is now, it is also an exception to the hearsay rule as explicitly provided in the rules of evidence. Okay. So gusto ko rin discuss sa inyo yung grounds for striking out of an answer. Dati-dati kasi, no, uh, prior to the amendment, isa lang yung sinasabing uh, ground for striking out on answer. No? Witness, when a witness answered before the adverse party had the opportunity to object. Okay. Pero in actual practice, pwede mo ipa-strike out ang answer when the answer is not responsive. When the witness testifies without a question being posed, natural. Masagot agad. When a witness makes a narration, nagnanarate. So, bawal din yun. And it is a ground for striking out on answer. Kaya may narapat sa amended rules na isama na rin ito as additional grounds for striking out an answer made by a witness. At mayroon pa silang dinagdag. No? The, the answer is incompetent, irrelevant, or improper. Why incompetent? Because it is, it is hearsay. It, by, it is violative of the rules of evidence. It is irrelevant because it has no relation to the vacant issue. It is improper. Okay. Pagka nakikipag-argue ka na sa witness, improper na yun. Bina, Binabadger mo siya. Hinaharas mo siya. It is improper. That can be stricken out of the record. Okay. That is why, no? Kung kayo ay uh, mapanood no? sa YouTube ng uh, naging hearing ni Johnny Depp at Amber Heard, no? uh, one of the counsel there, no? nag-o-object no? sa answer made by Amber Heard. Because it is hearsay, no? po pwede yun. Although nasagot na yung tanong. Okay. So, pagka ganun, it will be stricken out of the record. Okay. And that ends our uh, discussion. Thank you for watching and for staying until the end of my presentation. Please visit BLC website at bilyasislawcenter.com to know more about the Virtual Law Companion. Prepare for the bar examinations at any time, anywhere, and from any mobile device. Together, we can. Thank you.
Only at just me, Yeshua search warrant or warrant of us, nobody else. That is very important. And before it just me, you should search warrant or warrant of us, what are the requirements? First, there may be trouble cause. Number two, to be determined personally by the judge. Number three, after examination under oath for the complainant and the witnesses may produce. Number four, particularly describing the search, place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized or arrested. Those are the requisites before a just be issued search warrant or warrant of arrest. But first of all, take note, only a just be issued search warrant or warrant of arrest, nobody else. That's why uh, it's still pending at the Supreme Court now, diba? Right? Article 3, paragraph 3 of the family code, we have the provision for a marriage ceremony. Now, in our jurisdiction, we do not recognize unceremonial marriages. There must be a marriage ceremony. The minimum requirement is that the contracting parties must personally appear before the solemnizing officer and personally declare that they take each other as husband and wife in the presence of at least two witnesses of legal age. Now, even assuming that there was no uh, witness here, the marriage will also remain valid. That will be considered a mere irregularity that will not affect the validity of the marriage. Now, under Article 26, Paragraph 1 of the Family Code, all marriages solidified. Felony within the contemplation of Article 4 of the Revised Penal Code as a general rule, threat to spouse, that is threat, that is a felony. Tinakot mo sa saktan eh, papaluin eh. Pero in this case, the threat to spouse is a justified threat to spouse due to the circumstance of no, de uh, defense of property. And second, the threat to spank was made in the exercise of a right under the self-help doctrine, Article 429 of the Revised Penal Code. Owner, owner or lawful possessor of a thing has the right to exclude others from the enjoyment or disposal thereof, and for this purpose, they may use force which is reasonably necessary to pre prevent or repair an act. to do it, you talk about issuables of a warrant of arrest, is to follow blindly the finding of probable cause by the prosecutor, precisely because the prosecutor determines probable cause for the filing of the information in court, whereas the judge determines probable cause for the issuance of warrant of arrest. So, okay, yeah. Pero sa issuance ng search warrant, as mentioned, it should be proven. In other words, my friends, the judge must personally conduct an examination of the complainant and the witnesses um, that they may produce under oath or affirmation. The examination by the judge must be proven, okay? It is not enough to merely adopt the questions and answers asked by the, by a, by the previous uh, investigator during the PI. Magkaiba yun. Bakit? Kailangan po the judge should personally examine the complainant and the witnesses. So these are the...
Only adjust me, so search warrant or warrant of arrest, nobody else. That is very important. And before it just me, it's a search warrant or warrant of arrest. What are the requirements? First, there may be probable cause. Number two, to be determined personally by the judge. Number three, after examination under oath for the complainant and the witnesses may produce. Number four, particularly describing the search, place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized or arrested. Those are the requisites before a just be issued search warrant or warrant of arrest. But first of all, take note, only a just be issued search warrant or warrant of arrest, nobody else. That's why uh, it's still pending at the Supreme Court now, diba? Article 3, paragraph 3 of the family code, we have the provision for a marriage ceremony. Now, in our jurisdiction, we do not recognize unceremonial marriages. There must be a marriage ceremony. The minimum requirement is that the contracting parties must personally appear before the solemnizing officer and personally declare that they take each other as husband and wife in the presence of at least two witnesses of legal age. Now, even assuming that there was no uh, witness here, the marriage will also remain valid. That will be considered a mere irregularity that will not affect the validity of the marriage. Now, under Article 26, Paragraph 1 of the Family Code, all marriages solidified. felony within the contemplation of Article 4 of the Revised Penal Code as a general rule, threat to spouse, that is threat, that is a felony. Tinakot mo sa saktan eh, papaluin eh. Pero in this case, the threat to spouse is a justified threat to spouse due to the circumstance of no? uh, defense of property. And second, the threat to spank was made in the exercise of a right under the self-help doctrine, Article 429 of the Revised Penal Code. Owner, owner or lawful possessor of a thing has the right to exclude others from the enjoyment or disposal thereof. And for this purpose, he may use force which is reasonably necessary to pre prevent or repair an act. Issuals of a warrant of arrest is to follow blindly the finding of probable cause by the prosecutor. Precisely because the prosecutor determines probable cause for the filing of the information in court, whereas the judge determines probable cause for the issuance of a warrant of arrest. So, okay, yeah. Pero sa issuance ng search warrant, as mentioned, it should be proven. In other words, my friends, the judge must personally conduct an examination of the complainant and the witnesses um, that they may produce under oath or affirmation. The examination by the judge must be proven, okay? It is not enough to merely adopt the questions and answers asked by the, by a, by the previous uh, investigator during the PI. Magkaiba yun. Bakit? Kailangan po the judge should personally examine the complainant and the witnesses. So this is the...